Welcome to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. My name is Kevin Fleece, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at GBTA, and it's my pleasure to be moderating today's discussion. GBTA recently launched a quarterly podcast subseries focused on artificial intelligence and business travel, and today's episode is its second installment. In each of these episodes, we'll bring together experts and thought leaders, along with innovators from the field of AI, travel management, and corporate mobility to share their insights, experiences, and predictions. I'm thrilled today to be here with Alex Cosmas and Ryan Mann, both partners at McKinsey & Company. Alex leads advanced analytics in the travel and logistics sectors and works closely with airlines and other verticals on technology and data-driven transformation. He's also part of Quantum Black, McKinsey's AI arm, where McKinsey partners with organizations to develop AI-powered solutions. Welcome, Alex. Thanks, Kevin. I'm also joined by Ryan Mann. Ryan is also a partner at McKinsey, and he helps major hotel chains, airlines, cruise lines, and mobility companies drive performance improvements by evaluating and defining new business models, optimizing distribution channels, leveraging analytics for decision-making, and strengthening marketing and sales capabilities. And he's also a proud recent new dad. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Kevin. Delighted to be here. Awesome. So before we dive into the questions, let me just give a little context. Generative AI technologies like ChatGBT, which have only been around, by the way, one year, I think ChatGBT just celebrated its first anniversary about a week ago, have the potential to significantly change the way we work. And business travel management is no exception. There's a ton of chatter about AI, but it's not widely understood. Here's an example. We just completed our business travel outlook poll in the month of October, where we surveyed travel professionals around the world. 23% of respondents said that they are excited about the impact of artificial intelligence as an innovation driver, but 14% said it was a necessary evil. About a third said it's too early to say, and roughly 10% said they were very concerned due to ethics, privacy, and other considerations. So it's clear that it's very early days and education is key. So I'm, re- I'm hoping we can fill that knowledge gap here today, at least a little bit. Uh, again, I'm super excited to have both of you here, given your extensive experience working across the travel industry with so many different and distinguished organizations. And we could touch on so many different things. Uh, but uh, in the spirit of not boiling the ocean, uh, I'm hoping we can touch on four topics today, guys. First, AI's impact on airlines. And uh, we'll spend some time talking to Alex about that. AI's role in hospitality in the hotel sector. And that's really Ryan's forte. And then we'll come back to both of you to talk about how can AI help empower the business traveler. And then we'll wrap up with any future trends you see or advice you have for travel managers. So Alex, uh, let's get things started. I'll start with you. Let's talk about the airline sector. Um, Can you explain how artificial intelligence is being used by airlines to enhance the travel experience? Yeah, Kevin, thanks again for having us. Uh, It's great to be here. So uh, you framed it the right way, which is how is it being used? It's not all about necessarily what's to come, uh, although that is also equally exciting. The the vast majority of airlines today have some degree of AI in their org, full stop. The degree, of course, varies widely, but uh, I'd say the majority because many of the -the off-the-shelf systems that airlines use to schedule aircraft and crews, manage their pricing, manage inventory, recover operations, uh, engage with their loyalty program members, manage their digital marketing dollars. Those systems generally have AI within them. So we, we you know, we may not, may not notice, and that's fr- frankly, I would argue a good thing. Um, and if done right, the future evolution of AI, including generative AI, we similarly will not notice. Uh, of course, there's a smaller group of airlines from within the top 50 that have built AI applications that go a step further. Um, but it's but it's really uh, it's really present across the functions of all all major airlines today. Alex, thank you. Within that list, you know, you talked about pricing and operations, but you also touched on revenue management and a couple of other things. Can you provide a specific example, maybe out of revenue management? I know that's an area you spend a lot of time on. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, revenue management's an exciting uh it, there's, a, there's an exciting turning point that I think we're we're embarking upon now. If I first take a step back and say what is AI in the first place, it's all about turning history into patterns. 
just like the human brain does. Modern day revenue management systems rely upon what we call booking curves, but the, it's really just the history of millions of bookings to then predict the likelihood that a seat is going to be sold in the days leading up to the flight. That's AI. So revenue management systems really from the start have, have relied upon uh, data science and AI, and by the way, continue to evolve and, and enhance the, the capability. Automation is also a component of AI. And many airlines today rely on bots that constantly track price changes in the market so they can react quickly and remain competitive. And so, and of course, now you can bet that that there are even more advanced experiments that a few airlines are embarking upon on continuous pricing or dynamic pricing that rely on even more AI. And in general, it's all good for consumers because the intent is really to match uh customer wants, preferences, needs, choices with the value that they believe those choices give them. And of course, it's a highly competitive industry. So if I can't meet you where you are and where your preferences are, um, I'm likely to lose the booking. And I, ex I expect that's only going to continue. Awesome. Um, so maybe a follow-up question. Uh, there's a lot of conversation about NDC um, and NDC as a a, a a driver of providing more uh, traveler choice and uh, equipping airlines to better match offer and order. How do AI and NDC interrelate? It's funny, Kevin, because I, I, so I, I often say AI is, is only part of the answer. Digital delivery mechanisms are are equally, if not more important than the, the AI models that fuel them. So the mobile app push notifications, the dot-com experience, the kiosks and the digital signage that we go through, uh, data that we give to the front line, customer service agents, gate, gate agents, ramp agents. Um, and so NDC is just, you know, again, a digital delivery pathway or mechanism in, in distribution um, which is, is frankly, I think quite important, especially for business travelers who more so than leisure travelers index more highly on indirect distribution than on direct distribution. Just, you know, it's not a hundred percent one or the other, but it is important that NDC, which fuels, you know, as a protocol was built to fuel indirect distribution via uh, a direct pipe to the airline. Um, that that continue to be invested in. And it's not just the technology, but the AI offers that get fueled behind it. So for suppliers and TMCs, it's important that AI work uh, through and with the di distribution pathway, not just on their own .com. And that's harder than it sounds. It's uh, as you know, Kevin, having worked in that field for, for many years, um, it's easy to say, hard to do. Um, particularly at sub-second response times that that most travelers expect, but um, NDC, you know, I believe is here to stay, and it is because of the very need and desire to match AI offers, AI-driven offers, with the sh the shopping storefront, whatever channel a customer or traveler feels compelled to use, and that that that's not going to change. Not everyone's going to move to a dot com booking distribution. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. Ryan, let's turn it over and let's talk about hotels and hospitality organizations for a minute. Um, from your perspective, what are the big ways that AI is revolutionizing the hotel industry and the guest experience? Thanks, Kevin. Well, well, look, there's there's been a lot of ink spilled about how AI is going to completely change hotels and how in the future, you know, robots are going to take over every part of your, your stay from check-in to room service to serving uh, every aspect of your need that you may have during your stay. And, and look, while we credit that vision for being pretty bold and imaginative, it's, it's frankly not one that we believe in uh, or, or really want to see happen. Um, at the end of the day, the essence of hospitality must always include a human touch, human smiles, and human empathy. And so instead, when we think about AI, we see a future in which AI is powering uh, our staff at our hotels. So we think AI can help our staff do their jobs even better. 
uh, to provide our guests with even better care and better service. And to really, at the end of the day, just raise the bar on the essence of what hospitality is. And what that'll do is it'll give our folks more time and space to take care of the needs of our guests, which ultimately, you know, that's what hospitality is all about. So when it comes to use cases, um, we generally see them fitting into three big buckets. We've got the revenue generating, the cost operations, and uh, customer experience. So maybe I'll give a couple of examples. First, we see revenue generating AI use cases uh, as an area that many of our clients are excited about. And, and a few of our clients have had early success using AI and, and Gen AI in particular to completely transform their marketing function. So what they're doing is they're going from one to two email and A-B tests per week to frankly hundreds uh, with Gen AI generating copy to test, AI creating the test cells, and then AI also automating uh, the pushing of the winning test cells to scale. Um, and we're also seeing several leading clients integrate more and more AI into their revenue management capability like Alex talked about. So, you know, what our clients are doing is they're making progress on their attribute-based selling journeys by using AI to disaggregate a stay into attributes, uh, price each attribute individually, and then again as a package, and then repackage a personalized offer for the guest which is frankly our best guess at what will be most compelling for them. This attribute-based selling is a capability that we're especially excited about. It has the potential to truly drive a step change in how people book their stays going forward. And uh, it's now finally possible because of the advances in technology and analytics that we're seeing. So that's the first bucket. The second bucket is around cost and operations. Um, so our, our clients who are leading the way in this space are experimenting in many different ways whether it's, it's using Gen AI to respond to RFP requests faster and better, or using AI to accelerate quarterly financial close or to schedule a housekeeping. Plenty of great examples here. You know, one that I'm personally uh, especially excited about is one of our clients who's using AI for preventative maintenance, both from a, a cleaning perspective, but also from an appliance and ff &E perspective. And this is gonna help them save hundreds of thousands of dollars each year uh, at their large hotels. And then the, the third and final bucket is around customer experience. So look, today hotels have guest profiles with lots of rich but unstructured notes about their best guests. And when we talk to GMs, they'll all tell us these notes are useful, but they're not always actionable or organized in the best way. And so one of our clients has been using Gen AI to restructure these notes. And uh, they're including AI-driven next best action based on analytics for the frontline staff. And it's, it's driven really a huge change in guest experiences. And they're seeing that in their uh, customer experience course. Awesome. Um, excellent responses and paints just a really interesting picture from, the, from both the airline operator and the hotelier perspective. So thank you guys for sharing that, uh, those great insights. Um, let's pivot now and, and walk in the shoes of the business traveler for a moment. And uh, let's talk a little bit about from a business traveler's perspective, how is AI changing the way they plan and experience their trips? And I'll throw it out to both of you. I don't know who wants to go first. Um, Ryan, you're not on mute, so I'm going to go with Ryan. Sure. Well, look, lo lots of great examples here um, from Gen AI chatbots to help with reservation changes or service issues to automated travel policy compliance, to using AI to identify cost savings for a business as travelers. All of these are ones uh, that are being talked about and I'm sure are familiar to the audience. You know, one example that I might share that I, I really like is from a client that operates a large conference hotel, hundreds of rooms, big city. Uh, and I was having a conversation with the GM at this property and he was saying that, uh, you know, they tend to get emails from guests with feedback on their stay. And, and as you might imagine, you know, these emails tend to be fairly verbose and not always uh, written in the most clear way. So imagine, you know, a, a seven page email that takes a good 15, 20 minutes to kind of understand what the essence of the issue was in some cases. And so what my client is doing here is actually using AI to read through those emails very quickly summarize the main issues and suggest an appropriate response. And this is saving them literally dozens of hours each week. It's been a huge game changer for them. 
And what about on the airline and the airport side, Alex? Um, what can business travelers expect to see or experience that's different as a consequence of AI and its emergence on the airline sector? I think quite a bit. So, so first off, business travelers in in most respects have even more constraints on their travel journey than leisure travelers. And and by the way, all of us wear both hats. Um, so just think about our own experiences. We're often limited by our booking channel, sometimes even with a brand that we can fly with or stay at. Uh, they're highly time sensitive. They have specific geographic constraints. They have per diem budgets to conform to. And business travelers, just like leisure travelers, want frictionless experiences. So it's a hard problem. Getting business travel right is hard. And so AI is going to need to show up in a big way to capture the hearts and minds and, and the wallets of business travel. What, it, what does that mean? Hands So in, in my view, hands-on servicing, if we think about you know even my own trips, concierge level servicing becomes even more important. That's one of the most, you know, my my trip broke, right? Delays happened. My meeting got canceled and and we're on the fly. And so oftentimes that, whether it's your, your TMC, your business OTA, uh, your one of the highest variable costs for those groups are those are the the sort of hands-on servicing, right? Customer service agents. Oh, and let's not forget that queuing is unacceptable for our business travelers. So if you, you pile that all on, I need to be smarter, faster, more tailored, um, and and instantaneous than even in the leisure market. And and so we think about well, what does concierge level service even mean for us? What does a curated travel advisor mean? It's hard for us to imagine even what that what that white glove experience feels like, because we've lived without it for so long it's been you know the brick and mortar travel agencies are a thing of the past most tr business travelers entering the market right now never never grew up experiencing it uh so it's hard to imagine that a third party could actually do something better than we can on our own but in other aspects of our lives outside travel we're starting to experience or maybe have already experienced that sort of white glove personalized service when we go to the doctor, that's highly personalized. Not always the most pleasant or fun of topics, but it is it is personalized. Financial advisor, similarly, your inputs and outputs, advice are personalized. Your personal trainer, that whole field is actually now shifting to AI-driven or AI-augmented training. Your therapist, your coach, uh, your personal shoppers, right? The 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 you know the online personal shopping, all of those tend to be um, ad advice and offers that are curated for you. And if you have customer service related challenges are increasingly fueled by a chat bot that likely has components of generative AI behind it these days. So it's time for travel to catch up is the point. It's, it's, it's penetrating, AI is penetrating the majority of our, of our consumer lives. Um, and, uh, and we're the world's largest sector. So we need to start acting like it. And you see that permeating both pre-trip, during trip, post-trip. It's not limited to any one phase in terms of AI's ability to reshape that business traveler's experience. Yeah, I think it's all it permeates all phases, just like you said, Kevin. The the you know the recovery trip recovery is many would argue the most stressful uh, because you're in the moment and you want it. You know your options have narrowed. Um, Many would argue that the pre-trip, the shopping booking, is the most anxious, the high anxiety, because the 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 options are nearly limitless, um, although less so for business travels travelers, as we said. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, I think the, the 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 you know each company, each supplier, each TMC, uh, each corporate travel group are going to make their own bets on where they want to pull cost out. And where they want to deliver a magical customer experience, and some of it will be day of, sort of on trip, and some of it will be uh, pre-booking. Awesome. Um, well, let's let's as we kind of approach the conclusion and kind of the final chapter of the podcast. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, still early days. Um, there are 
you know, a substantial portion of folks who have questions and some concerns about ethics, privacy, and other considerations. What are those concerns that um, organizations should be thinking about as it pertains to data privacy and security uh, when AI gets involved in business travel solutions? Yeah, Kevin, happy to take a stab. I think, first of all, they're, they're sure there are travel, sorry, sure there are concerns and there will continue to be concerns about data privacy and security. From what I've seen, the tech teams in the travel sector generally rival those in other consumer sectors. So they they will have the skill and the incentive to maintain high capability around security and privacy. I think the, the, the sort of question behind your question is probably that will business travelers, just like leisure travelers, uh, be willing to give up their data to their supplier for a quote unquote better experience. And on that, I think the 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 case law is there that the key is on gifting functionality in return for data, not to simply bury it under terms and conditions and not know that you've you've parted ways with your data. For example, if you're if you're willing to share your location with your supplier or your agent, I I'm able to give you tailored searches. I'm able to auto fill in the origin bar. I'm able to estimate your trip time to the airport or help you navigate the airport or the hotel. Um, and so the the give and take, you give me something and I give you functionality in return, I think is what's going to help us overcome individual data privacy concerns. Again, assuming that our suppliers have the right security and protocols in place, which I think they do. Great. So let's let's kind of wrap it up talking about uh, future trends, but also I'd like to get some sort of practical advice you have. Um, why don't we start with the practical advice, if that's okay? How can businesses and travelers stay ahead of the curve when it comes to AI? And specifically, as you think about corporate travel managers, what recommendations would you have? Yeah, let me get started here and then Alex will, will weigh in. But Thanks, Look, in our view, getting ahead here is a contact sport. You know, the most important thing is to experiment in safe and contained ways, uh, keeping in mind some of the privacy and security challenges that Alex raised. You know, many of our clients are holding right now what we call collision sessions, where we're bringing together cross-functional group of leaders, frontline workers, and big thinkers from outside the organization to identify and prioritize use cases. And then what they do is they set up agile squads to go work on making the winners a reality. And we're finding that this approach tends to drive the most pragmatic and rapid results. And it tends to drive results that are very tailored to the business to help truly move the needle uh, on impact to revenue or cost and operations or a guest experience one way or another. And so at the end of the day, what, what travel managers and industry leaders need to keep in mind is you know, this is still developing rapidly. Uh, and the key isn't to wait for the perfect. The key is to get started today and find ways to add value with what's available and build over time. Any additional thoughts on that or on trends? I mean, Ryan said it well. You know, there's no question these days the buzz is increasingly about Gen AI and it's getting more attention. Um, but let's not kid ourselves. The AI and digital are a little bit on thin ice. I mean, I think the, the, the general public is 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 waiting for screw ups because it's a movement away from the status quo. Um, not because we like our our brands to fail, but rather because we want our experiences to be consistent. So, you know, we ha it has to be done right to Ryan's point, and experimentation is key. One of the things we tell our clients is is if you can't measure the cause and effect precisely of, it, of an intervention or of, a, of an AI outcome, then don't even go down the path of the experiment. Avoid the experiment. I tell my clients I'd rather them experiment correctly on something small than swing for the fences and have no idea where the ball got hit. And that to us means cause and effect measurement you have to have eyes and ears on the outcomes that you're trying to achieve and not just hope in aggregate that it works over the course of a quarter, but rather you never go more than a few days before you've stepped back and done an evaluation of, of the cause and effect. 
So in, in travel, that's often customer land, customer preference, customer satisfaction. And so we, you know, one of the things we've done recently is link uh, operational outcomes and digital outcomes like, like promotional campaigns to tailored custom measurement of customer behavior. Like, uh, can I understand if customers have increasingly or decreasingly bounced off a page in response to a change in the dot-com landing? Um, are they increasingly or decreasingly abandoning carts when they get to the payments page and something's not quite working the way it, it was in the past? Are they returning less frequency, frequently to search? These are the sorts of um, micro behaviors that are measurable. If you put a focused uh, experimental plan together and you put, frankly, systems in place so that you know whether you're you're trending in the right direction and don't go much further if you aren't trending in the right directions, because customers, frankly, are, 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 aren't, um, I, I think customers, like I said, are expect digital is a little bit on thin ice and looking for the failures to just walk away. Um, so experimentation is key. Start small, uh, as Ryan said, and, uh, and don't swing for the fences until you're good and ready to measure. And I, and I think the, the go goal, ahead, go ahead, Ryan. I think the goal is, is not, let's get as much AI into the marketplace as possible, or you know, let's release as many AI products or services or capabilities as we can, and the winner's gonna be the one with the highest quantity, right? It's, it's about how can we use this new tool in our tool belt that continues to evolve to take friction out of the experience and superpower our people. You know, there's, there's an example I love uh, from a small chain of hotels that we work with that's using AI to rapidly assess their decarbonization potential and roadmap. So uh, our colleagues developed a tool where, frankly, all you need is a utility bill and some basic stats about a property like square footage. We take a satellite photo, we input it into our tool, and then we generate a dollar value on a specific plan to decarbonize. It's amazingly accurate when we back test it versus what a dedicated engineering firm would produce. We can do it in under a week. And that's a that's an example where AI is giving you an ability to do something faster, cheaper, better. But what you get from it is very non-AI. It's a plan. It's a path to decarbonize. I'm glad you brought up sustainability. And uh, you know, we're just, I think COP28 is wrapping up right now. And Sustainability is top of mind in, in the corporate travel space. GBTA Foundation focuses on two things, people and planet. And our under our planet pillar, it's about climate action and sustainability. And just really trying to make sure that the industry is part of the conversation. And um, so that was a really interesting example, Ryan, of where AI is actually helping an organization improve its sustainability position or reduce its carbon footprint. Um and so there's probably, if you think about that as one example, and then you replicate that across multiple examples, uh, AI probably has the potential to play a key role uh, in terms of driving that sustainability initiative for these organizations. Would you agree with that? And um, how do you see that sort of interplay between artificial intelligence and sustainability as two really key priorities for travel organizations? Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. You know, in, in my conversations with industry leaders, one thing is very clear. Everybody wants to do the right thing. Every leader I talk to wants to do the right thing and uh, decarbonize and uh, really support all of these uh, amazing goals that we need to do as a planet uh, going forward. The challenge has been, how do I get there? And what's so exciting about the time period that we're in is that AI finally can help power some of the solutions that can help bridge the gap between the vision or the aspiration and where we stand today. Because that's been an impediment to change in the past. But now we have all these new tools, finally, that can help us uh, bridge that gap. And that's something that I'm personally very excited about. It's good for the industry, it's good for the planet, and it's good for our people. Awesome. Any final words, um, Alex or Ryan, anything you'd like to leave us with before we conclude? 
I'm thrilled you uh, you have this series and and it it's no surprise you have this topic on deck because it's I think a top of mind for lots of folks, mm-hmm. lots of corporate travel groups. Um, I it, for me this is the the beginning of the next golden era of travel, and we deserve one because we haven't gotten ours yet as a generation. So I'm I'm thrilled. I know it's going to be on the at the hands of AI, and and just can't wait for what's to come. Great, Alex. I second that. Thank you. Um, well, listen, thank you both. And um, we touched on a lot today. It's hard to wrap it up in a, in a soundbite, but clearly AI not only has the potential, but is already demonstrating its ability to play an integral role uh, in helping travel organizations across all verticals improve customer experience, operations, revenue management, marketing, and even have an impact, a role to play in driving the sustainability initiatives of these different organizations. Um, And it's really about the combination of having the right data and the right digital channels, and then the AI tools on top to make that a reality. Um, We could talk all day, but I just wanna thank you both for your incredibly valuable insights. Uh, you bring a great perspective to the to the table and um, really enjoyed the conversation. So thank you both very, very much. Thank Thanks you. for having us, Kevin. Absolutely. And with that, you've been listening to The Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. For more information about GBTA and its work, visit gbta.org. And be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Alex. And thank you, Ryan.